And I'm Pat, and this is another edition of the Weekly Orbit, the week ending August 26th, 2023. Uh, our normal host, Wack, is on a publicity tour through Europe, and Ken has graciously decided to join us in his place. Ken, these are some pretty big shoes you're going to try to fill this morning. Yeah, really, really big shoes if you've ever met uh, <laughs> Wack in person. But uh, Pat, I'm just absolutely excited to be here filling in for him today. That's great. Yeah, he does have, uh, he's got huge shoes, actually. Um, <laughs> I'm going to share my screen with you. And in fact, I think the first tab we have is a picture of Wack with, I believe this is Romana. Um, again, you know, signing autographs. Uh, he's supposed to be checking in with the European Bureau of Weekly Orbit, but my source is telling me he has not checked in there yet. Looks like he's having a lot of fun, though. <laughs> yep. Okay, so let's go over some stats, Ken. Um, this is the Dr. Worm's Rocket Pool Dune dashboard, and one thing that stuck out to me was this number over here. We seem to have finally broken through the 500,000 our ETH supply, um, which is a, it's a major milestone. Uh, we were flirting with 500 for a while, but with redemptions, um, we, we were at 499 for a bit. So it looks like this week we've finally topped it. Any thoughts? Yeah, I'm always excited on these things. I know the past uh, couple of months we've had a little bit of excitement and then a little bit of setback as we realized maybe our calculation wasn't correct. Either it was a mini pool count or uh, TVL locked or RE supply. But uh, I think now it's really uh, allowed us to hone all of the dashboards, including this one here by Dr. Worm. And it's just great to celebrate that milestone. Yeah, it's great. Um, the other notable, um, we got the ratio here, 0 0.0147. We've been kind of hanging out around that 0 0.015, 0 0.014. Seem to have uh, found a, a perhaps a bottom. We'll see. Um, any thoughts on the RPL ratio? I know that you know it's been a tough few months since Atlas. It looks like we kind of peaked around April or so, and it's been. Um, there's been some sell-off regarding RPL, but what are your thoughts about RPL right now and perhaps then, you know, at, at, toward the file, the rest of the 2023? Yeah, it's, it's interesting. I think my previous experience on RPL is it was either up into the right only coin or it was a stable coin and it was somewhat <laughs> kind of maybe in my mind uh, like, well, it's, this is what the new ratio is going to be. It's going to reach this equilibrium. And then I think it was a, you know, a pretty, uh, pretty rude awakening here to see that, nope, it's just like many other cryptocurrency assets that are traded. It can, price can go up, price can go down. And I think that is something that's important for node operators to realize, especially maybe new ones when they're setting up a mini pool is, is that they are taking on a, a kind of a risk in, in the RPL token. Um, it's certainly beneficial when it goes up, right? Europe gives you more, uh, insurance, uh, to create uh, more uh, mini pools or um, um, L it, I guess greater reduced LED mini pools when they come around. There's a lot of talk about mm -hmm. LED fours now being on the team's design. So I think it's something yeah. there, but I do, I do think it is important for us to realize it's just an actively traded asset and the price can go up and price can go down. But, you know, overall, uh, you know, I'm bullish, I think on the, uh, on the prospects of it, uh, given the, the recent conversations about the roadmap ahead for rocket pool. Yeah, and I think on your Twitter spaces last week, uh, the team kind of threw in there at the end. <clears throat> they were um, looking at LEB fours, and uh, Valdorf has done some research from the community. And um, could you elaborate about that? Because I know there's a lot of interest out there for, hey, we did LEB eights. When's the fours coming? And uh, what would that look like? Um, what's your take? Yeah, you know, it's I was I was actually pretty excited to kind of hear about it uh, finally from the team. I mean, I think it's always been there. I uh, was never really, really certain as to when that would be. And I, I think the interesting thing is, you know, one one key thing is like there's there's maybe two two factors in LEB fours. The first one is, are there any technical limitations the way the code is written that would prohibit or be a roadblock to create? LEB fours versus LEB eights or, or, you know, mini pool 16s. Right. Um, and then the second one is kind of what I call a risk appetite. Right. Um, I think what a lot of um, Val's research has shown is that look, the, the smaller and smaller, the, the node deposit you take from the node operator, 
then the greater the risk is that when you get one of these lottery blocks, and I think it will come up later in today's episode about the smoothing pool, right? You get these mega lottery blocks or just even a good size lottery block. And, and a lottery block to me is is kind of defined as a as a as a MEV block that is greater than your node deposit, right? So now you are highly incentivized to just walk away from your node deposit and steal that MEV for yourself. And if you play the long game of like, well, maybe this one's not even fully that amount, but maybe I, I wait, I'll take half now and I'll wait another year or two and chances are I might get another one and, and take that, right? There's, there's kind of this incentivized or strategy to win by stealing, right? And that's one of the reasons why I think LED8s were kind of the, the level of risk appetite that said, okay, well, you know, we don't think there's that many people that are going to pay that long of a, a con game to, to win at an LEB8. But as an LEB4, it gets a little closer. Now, I think Val's research, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, um, you know, kind of aligned very similar to some of my early work in here that said, you know, fours are, are, are probably okay. But it's when you go below four that you start to start to kind of risk a little bit here. But the one advantage that I think we heard from the team and love, love for them to correct is one, technically they looked at it and there isn't any road blockers on the technical part and LEB4 is very much capable. And then I think I heard from them say that, you know, as part of the, the two kind of back-to-back -back upgrades, Houston and Saturn as they're referring to them, but more important, Saturn, Saturn really looks like it's going to include mega pools. And this is an interesting thing now because you know, maybe your ability to get these ultra low ETH bonded mini pools is dependent upon not on just your single mini pools deposit. Let's let's say in the case of a LEB4, it would be 2080, mm -hmm. you know, four ETH, right? And 28 ETH you're borrowing. Um, but it might be based upon your total amount on your node deposit. Like maybe you still need 16 ETH across your entire node to get LEB4s, right? But then you, right. can, you can have, uh, you know, up to so many LEB4s, right? Because if you steal once, <laughs> then they can they can strike or they can force exit everything else there. Now there's a little bit of kind of game theory that has to be flushed out there, but I think it's I think it's very positive. And, uh, you know, yeah. one of my thoughts on this is that we, we do need that capital efficiency, right? We need it to be, to be a small capital outset at, from the node operators, enough to keep them incentively aligned, but uh, it gives them the greatest, what I call lift capacity, the greatest ability to mint the largest amount of our ETH. Yeah, and uh, I was I browsed through some of Eldor's research, and it seems to me uh, that you know if you are a brand new node operator and you've got four ETH, you're not going to be able to just spin up one LEV4 under this because that risk is there. Like, hey, what happens if you've got a um, an MEV of five ETH? You could be like, oh, I'm cashing out. See ya. But if you're bonded for say ten or twelve or sixteen ETH, it becomes a lot, a lot less likely. Is that your take as well? Like, you're you're gonna have to you're gonna have to have some basically you're gonna have to have some uh, skin in the game here in order to be able to spin up an LEV4. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I mean, I suspect they'll come up with maybe a, a simple approach, right? Maybe a more conservative approach in the beginning, but I do mm -hmm. kind of see some type of risk bonding curve, right? You know, the more capital asset you do have staked, you might be able to get a larger amount of, of, um, of low ETH uh, bonded mini pools, right? Versus a smaller amount as to where they kind of draw those tiers or if it's linear or if there is some curve to it. Uh, right. I think that's going to be an area of further research needed. Yeah, it's exciting. All right. Well, let's move on to the deposit pool. And it's full still. Um, if we look at this week, we had, you can tell here, uh, Ken, <clears throat> over on the deposits by date, uh, the days where we had some movement of some folks um, lowering their bond uh, from 16 to 8, we had like on August 23rd, 5,800 ETH, and on August 24th, 2009, 12. And on other days where that didn't really happen, we had smaller deposits. But it seems like we've got um, some movement um, amongst some of our whales uh, who are starting to bond down from 16 to 8. Yeah, and uh, somewhere I recall seeing a statistic of the number of uh, reduced mini pools that we have, and I, I think maybe we we're probably past the halfway point. It's been a while since I've looked at kind of that pie chart metric, um, but yeah, right now with the uh, with the deposit pool being full, right? See, in the top there, it's eighteen thousand ETH. Uh, no one can really mint our ETH right now unless they're a node operator 
uh, forming a mini pool, right? It's the only way to make capacity in there. So if you're not going to be a node operator, the only way to acquire our ETH is to purchase it on the secondary markets, right? The Uniswaps of the world. And uh, that fortunately or unfortunately, depending upon what perspective you are, uh, starts to add a little bit of a premium to our ETH. Yeah, and Wack, Wack and I were discussing um, in the prior couple episodes how <clears throat> the validator queue length is one of the factors that per perhaps some of the whales are looking at. Uh, right now, it's currently down 23 days and three hours. And I guess that's important because <clears throat> the reward period for RPL rewards is uh, 28 days. So if you, you've got a whole ton of mini pools and you want to miss out on your RPL rewards, you're going to want to be able to transition over uh, within one a reward period and not have it overlap. And it looks like, so perhaps uh, our next reward period, I think is August 31st. If I could, yeah, yeah, the um, end of the so, month. It's, uh, this is a month where we actually get two reward periods for the year. Right, so it could be uh, first week in September, we're going to see a whole bunch of, you know, if the validator queue remains where it is, um, we're going to see a whole bunch of movement um, regarding our, our whales. I think this is the, here's a pie chart I think you're referring to. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, exactly. And so I, I think the, uh, the the lighter color, pink or orange or whatever color that is there, uh, you know, it shows the 16 ETH mini pools, right? These are individuals that are operating them. And if they have enough RPL asset uh, needed uh, to form the second one, they can actually split that 16 into two eights and yep. uh, generates a little bit more income for the node operator. So it's uh, kind of an incentive for them. But more importantly, it does, uh, you know, for um, it kind of kind of triples the capacity that is needed, right? So the 116 is only carrying 16 ETH, but uh, two eights carry three times that, 16, 16, and 16 again, or 224. Yep. Cool. And here's... Uh... On the events page, uh, you can see some of the bonding. This happened uh, actually yesterday. Um, you'll see pages here of bond reduction, bond reduction, bond reduction, bond reduction, you know. And this is what we want to see because that's going to free up the deposit pool, which allows us to mint our fresh our ETH. And uh, so there it is, folks. Uh, this is, uh, I think this is Thomas. Just a look at his, and he's one of the guys uh, who's been reducing a little bit, and I expect this is going to really accelerate in September, um, as we talked about. Um, right now, he's got 280 ETH credit. Um, you know, he just did a whole bunch yesterday, August 26th. Oh, no, it's actually today. Um, so uh, we'll hope, hope to see more of this, because I think that deposit pool, we're, we're kind of stuck when it's maxed out, we're not able to grow and to get these uh, 16, these leftover LEB 16s to switch over to LEB 8s is going to really free up capacity. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if you look down, it looked like he was maybe strategically uh, uh, doing the conversions. It shows the number of, uh, right there in the middle of the screen, the number of 16 mini pool limits and 80 uh, mini pool limits, I guess. And I guess maybe that's just what his uh, limits are right now based upon his RPL in there. But it looks like he is uh, maybe having a little bit of strategy as to when he when he converts. He's not converting all of them. He appears to be doing it in batches. So I assume yeah, there's... He's a smart guy. He... Uh... He, he's like the, I remember hearing his story on Wax Show. Um, I mean, he is like the all-star degenerate. Uh, he hit, you know, all the tops <laughs> through the last few years in terms of uh, growing his, uh, his his ETH stack. So um, I'm, he's, I'm sure he's strategizing here to maximize his um, his rewards and um, his, reduce his costs. Okay, on to the next thing. Um, this is a little... Uh, uh, post by uh, Dave from the team uh, regarding Rocket Arb, and he writes, <clears throat> I tried to use it, it being Rocket Arb over the weekend, but I was running into gas issues despite me trying a number of different values. You patched the issue overnight, and the ratio went up during the interim, but honestly, this is such a great idea. Uh, I also used it when you first made it a while back. We'll aim to execute a bounty on making this an official plugin for the Rocket Pool smart node stack soon. Credit where it's due, great idea, and execution, mate. So that's a real um, tip of the hat to, I think it was Romana, right, who uh, created yeah. the Rocket Arm. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, I can't have that. 
top of the tip of the hat uh, to him there. I think it's uh, I think it's excellent. Uh, definitely credit from uh, from Dave. You can't can't ask for for kind of greater accolades. And more importantly, it looks like uh, there is an option there for him to be remunerated for his work on that. I think it's an incredibly creative ideal. I think it's helped to incentivize the growth of Rocket Pool. And uh, I yet have had a chance to use it yet. I, I kind of FOMO mm -hmm. in when uh, LEB8s were out. I was not as maybe yeah. as wise as, uh, uh, as others that are waiting here to take the ARB opportunity back. But uh, I know it's uh, probably what is driving right now the continued uh, growth of our node operators. I mean, it certainly would be advantageous for them to do so. I so was looking for the at listeners, it just right before the... Yeah, for the listeners who are not familiar with Rocket Arb, could you explain what, what is it and how is it beneficial yeah. for a node operator? Yeah, yeah. So it's a, it's a, a very ingenious idea here. And what it does is, um, you know, when the you know, there's a couple of conditions that have to be there. One, the deposit pool has to be full not too full, but full. Uh, so mm -hmm. you want it to be right around 18,000 ETH. That's what the, the deposit pool limit is. Um, you don't want it to be above uh, a number such that when you make your mini pool, you're not creating space in it because it doesn't create space until it comes below that 1800 threshold. So somewhere between 18,000 ETH, excuse me if I said 1800, 18,000 ETH and 18,024 ETH, right? And if it's, if it's within those ratios, and it seems to be kind of balancing right there, maybe on purpose, um, and second, if there's a premium in the secondary markets, meaning that it uh, you can um, sell our ETH or buy our ETH either way uh, at a rate that is greater than the minting rate out of the deposit pool, uh, there's an arbitrage opportunity where you can uh, a form a, form a mini pool uh, using Rocket Arm, create space in the deposit pool, and in that same transaction, so no one no one gets in between you or front runs you in this thing. It's what they call an atomic transaction. It's all done in one transaction. Um, it creates space in there that um, you take a flash loan out and you borrow ETH. <laughs> uh, you mint that R ETH with the space that you've created in the mini pool. And then you go to the secondary markets like Uniswap and you sell it at a higher price. And you collect the difference minus gas transaction fees. But if there is a, even a slight premium because you're buying 24 ETH, um, you can make um, some money on it. Probably I, I did it this morning and it was about $200 USD, about 0 0.1 ETH, but enough that that would cover your gas costs for it. You might actually come out positive and make some money. So it incentivizes you to go from a 16 ETH to an 8 ETH mini pool, assuming you have the RPL collateral already staked on the node. Um, and so it kind of incentivizes you to do that or incentivizes you to kind of time your your formation of your mini pools to kind of make it gas free and make a little bit of a profit. And obviously, the greater the the price differential, the premium on our on our on our ETH, then um, the more money you can make at this thing. So there's a little bit of game theory to this as, as to when to do it. And I think that's probably what Thomas is doing with his. He's he's uh, releasing his in batches, not only timed with the RPL reward window, but also timed with maybe an incentive in there to make it very, very economically advantageous to him. So what Roman has done, he's taken all of that and he's kind of abstracted away all the technicalities and just created a little mini con smart contract or something that that Dave is re referencing and plans to incorporate into the smart node. So it's just kind of a cup, not a couple clicks, but a couple, uh, just a couple things that a node operator has to do instead of having to do flash loans and all this other stuff, it's going to just be automated. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. And even, even, even what Romana has done, I mean, it's a, it's like a two part one from what I understand. I can't say I've gone through it firsthand here, but you know, you start your mini pool formation and then before you get to the final confirmation in the rocket pool stack that says, are you sure, you, you know, forever hold your peace, you know, you're going to make a mini pool. You, yeah. you pause it, you exit, you control C it and you copy that file, the transaction file that was kind of ready to go. And then you insert it into his tool and it does uh, all the steps that I previously described kind of automatically, right? And so you end up right. with a profit. And I believe if maybe I'm not reading too much into what Dave is posting back here is that, hey, wouldn't it be great uh, just in the rocket pool stack <laughs> if it said, hey, do you want to form a mini pool? And by the way, there's a premium and this will net you 0.1 ETH in profit. <laughs> you know, do, do right. you want to take that profit or <laughs> yeah. no? Yes or no. Uh, just form yes. a regular mini pool. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, then obviously it's very easy for the node operator, seamlessly integrated, and um, it's just 
saying yes to a question, maybe something like that, if I understand it correctly. Yeah, that would be absolutely wonderful. Okay, on to the next thing. Uh, this is a uh, wrap your alley, the smoothing pool. Um, we're currently at f- for this rewards period 466 ETH, which um, is currently, I think, the third. Yeah, we're at. Yes, right now it's the third highest uh, smoothing pool balance we've had. The second is uh, back in May, which was 508. The largest, of course, was last month, um, which was at, I think it was over 600, yeah, 619. So at 466, we've got about five days left. Um, what do you think, Ken? Do you think we're going to pass 508 or it's going to be, I think it's going to be pretty close. We had a nice, I think it was 16 or 17 ETH uh, proposal deposited last night, which bumped us up to 466. So uh, what are your thoughts? Yeah, you know, uh... <laughs> It's it's interesting. Everybody loves the smoothing pool, right? Uh, I guess maybe the people that might not love it are the are the few. I call them lucky or unlucky, right? They're lucky that they win a lottery block. They're unlucky and that they're in the smoothing pool, so it's socialized, shared by all the participants in it, right? I I have not been fortunate enough to hit one of those high lottery blocks, so I don't know exactly emotionally how I would feel. Um, but I do know, uh, you know, we did a lot of early work and modeling this thing that more people in this, most people in the smoothing pool, about 80% of the people in the smoothing pool will actually over a, you know, reasonable period of time, a year or two years, something like you would be likely to participate in it are going to, you know, end up more financially rewarded than if they just participated um, by a, being a solo mini pool, so this solitarious mini pool. And the reason for it is you can actually see it on this chart if you look at it. Like most of the lines are are kind of, you know, nice, steady 45 degree angle ups, right? Those are just Mm -hmm. the regular return (laughs) MEVs with a little bit of variances. But then you hit these very large vertical lines, you know, and the reward block. And our current reward block, you'll see it about halfway through, right? And yeah, that one, it's the, the vertical line that's just right, that one right there, yeah. And what that is, is that's one of these lottery blocks or mega lottery blocks, right? Where one of the node operators in the smoothing pool hit the jackpot. And that's what really increases the value. And you can see how rare those are. I mean, these are, you know, how many mini pools? 15,000 mini pools that we're running in here, right? It's close to 16,000. Yeah. You can see how rare they are. They only occur one or two times over this uh, look back of, you know, almost a year now. Um, but yet they make a significant impact into the total value. And so, um, this is why, you know, collectively as a whole, we're all more likely to win in participating in the smoothing pool. So it takes a little bit to kind of wrap your head around that, but I think it's really good. And certainly I enjoy celebrating getting a, you know, recognizing we're only going to get, you know, a fraction of that big lottery sure. block because there's so many people in there that you need know, to divide anything by 16,000 people, it becomes small again, but still it's, it's great to celebrate. And I think we're close to... I'll say we'll get number two this time. There's still four yeah. more days left, and then lock it happen. Yeah, four, four, four. yeah, 460 says we need about uh, just over 50 ETH more. To per, I think 508 is the number two, so we're at 466. So about 53 more ETH or so. Uh, we'll see. I, 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 uh, you know, I, you, you did a lot of research. You put out a white paper last year regarding the smoothing pool and whether it makes sense or not, and. As I recall, the TLDR was most people will benefit from being in it unless unless the amount of mini pools you have exceeds the amount of mini pools in the smoothing pool. Is that does that sound about right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Once once the if your contribution was less than fifty percent of the aggregate smoothing pool, so right now it's sixteen thousand mini pools that are participating. So if you came in with eight thousand. Well, it's probably not advantageous to you, but if you're well below 8,000 mini pools, you know, if you're only, you know, 10% or 5% or 1% of that, and I think even our largest node operators are, aren't even, aren't even to those levels, right? Um, then, you know, mathematically, you know, you'll have about an, an 80% chance that it's going to be others in that pool that get those lottery blocks. And so you'll benefit by getting your fractional share of those lottery blocks and only yeah. a small amount of people. There is a little bit of, of risk here that you might be one of those people that participate in the smoothing pool. You win the lottery, but now you're told you need to share it with all your coworkers that also bought that lottery ticket with you, right? Right. Uh, right. You know, so, which which one do you want to do? But you know, um, 
uh, all I know is whatever whatever I choose, it will be the opposite. So I'm in the smoothing pool, so chances are I'll probably get one of those lottery blocks. And if I'm yeah. not in the smoothing pool, chances are the smoothing pool will get the lottery block. But that's just yeah. Me. So there's there's two things that I do. One, I'm in the smoothing pool, but number one is I don't look at my I don't look to see if I've ever won at all. And I I have looked occasionally, and it's you know a fraction of an eighth. It's you know nothing. And number two, I look forward to every 28 days looking to see how much I got. It's like just a, like, it's like icing on the cake every month. Hey, look at that little extra ETH. It's, and I, I didn't really do much. I just participated in the smoothie pool. And it's a, it's a nice, almost like a dividend each month to get it. And it's really something that <clears throat> right now I think makes Rocket Pool unique and is attractive uh, advantage Rocket Pool has over, say, solo staking, you know, where um, you you can share in this every month and get and get extra ETH. I, I, I love it. I think it's a great thing that Rocket Pool does. And thanks for your research. Yeah. That's really was hands down. It's like, boom, okay, nope. I'm going with uh, this moving pool. And I think it looks like about, I think, what, three quarters of mini pools are in this moving pool. So, um, or three quarters of node operators, I think, are in the pool, as I recall. Yeah, yeah okay. definitely. If you're watching this and you haven't participated in it or don't know what it is, uh, ask around it's um a lot of people have been contributing to it and uh kind of looking at it and uh you know one of the nice things now that we've had a year of data you can actually do a retro analysis to see um you know to see what those what those odds are yeah okay uh a little quick announcement from joe he just uh posted in the discord um, to node operators uh we have just released the first major smart node update since atlas it's version one point 10 um he goes on to say oh no i'm sorry i have the wrong one that was a uh, more recent one, one i think right yeah yeah this <laughs> i refreshed the page here and uh the announcement he was making here was that the blocks route relay uh that some folks use for their mev sidecar is being officially sunsetted um so if you're using the blocks route relay, you're gonna probably want to uh, turn that off or switch to another uh, relay. So um, I don't know. It, do you know any more about why blocks route is shutting it down? Do they just not have a, a lot of uh, uh, market share? They decide as they want to go a different route. Do you know any, anything yeah, about that? Yeah, there was actually a uh, I'll call it a community call, but it was a panel with all nodes blocks blocks route block route. And um, uh, Langers was on there and Mav was uh, kind of moderating it. And if I recall correctly, I think the reason they just said is just it wasn't being used that much, right? I mean, certainly is trying to play by the ethical rules in there, the amount of MEV that, um, that bidders and builders would uh, submit to that relay were, you know, significantly less than ones that would do, you know, quote unquote, unethical things like front running or sandwiching. Um, liquidations right i don't know if that was allowed in in the ethical and so it just it would never be the top bidder so if you subscribe to that relay and one other relay uh then you would you would never never um select that relay as the winning relay and so i think they just uh decided to shut it down because it just it wasn't and product performing as well fit. as their other ones. Now they do have a couple other relays, and I think, you know, I think one of the relays is uh, one of the one of the more active winning relays that are out there. Um, and so uh, certainly, Blocks Route is still going to be one of the supported uh, Mev Boost relays that are in there. Uh, I think where it might be a little challenging for folks is, so what what do you do if, let's say, for personal reasons or maybe regulatory reasons, you don't want to propose a block uh, that maybe has those quote unquote unethical um, transactions in there. You know, they, there's just not a, there's just not a relay right now that I think provides, provides that service. There's also a lot of talk of just about what, what is the exposure to a node operator that proposes a block? Are they more like infrastructure, like the telecommunication industry that, Hey, you provided a phone line. How do you know if somebody did something criminal over that phone line or not? You're just, all you do is provide a phone line. Um, so I, th I think uh, I, I don't think we've seen the end of end of the discussion on this, and it will probably come up multiple times in Ethereum's future here. Yeah. Okay. On to our next item. Um, our poor friend Jasper. Uh, he got suspended off of uh, Twitter, unfortunately, but he he had a really great post. Did, did he ever uh, get back right on? I, I I've, I've lost that saga. I know he got kicked off, and I thought, well, how, do, how does one even get back on? Uh, I don't know. It's such a mess. Um, 
I've been trying to use Farcaster more now, and um, but uh, that's that saga. That's probably a continuing story. But as of right now, he's still not on Twitter. But he he uh, he had a really nice essay post on Reddit that I, I'll post in the show notes. Um, not going to read it all, but it's a. I mean, I mean, what can you say, Jasper? This guy's amazing. He's got you know full time medical school, and he finds time to write a <laughs> just continuing to add to. Uh, Rockapool and providing really great content and he's here he, he you know just give you a little um he talks about um the future of lsts um he talks about the different roadmaps uh regarding Rockapool and and lido um he makes he talks about how Rockapool is trying to vertically integrate uh using node set and um lido is trying to do more horizontal so if you want to get into it um you know take a read it's really excellent of course as always um and we'll look forward to i'm really 10 i'm looking forward to node set uh hopefully they're going to be launching um perhaps by the end of the year or early next year uh building on on top of rockable almost like an l2 um i'm not familiar with all the technical details that go into that but it sounds like it could be something that could really help uh rockable grow so and, and any quick thoughts about node set yeah, one of the things I learned is uh, Wander has uh, actually submitted uh, to speak at the ETH Staker gathering that's going to happen at DevConnect in uh, in uh, November of this year. So it's a couple months out, but I think uh, I think we might be able to kind of hear the latest and kind of kind of see what what's there. I know that both he and Nick are working, you know, pretty diligently in the background with their team, and um, but it would be real interesting, I think, to get that sneak peek at the uh, the East Acre event. And I'm hoping I haven't talked to to Nick so yet or understand it, but I'm hoping they'll definitely record those and maybe even be able to live stream them so everybody could can, uh, can kind of participate at the same time. Yeah, I know they got their heads down, working hard, um, you know, trying to get out the their product. So I'm looking forward to it. I think it's great. Okay, the last thing we'll finish up here uh, is we've um, touched on this a few times uh, on the weekly orbit. There's been ongoing discussion um, regarding RPL staking uh, re rework proposal. Uh, this has been spearheaded by Valdorf and uh, Nashua. And this week uh, there was a little bit of a, uh, kind of a sediment poll in the forum. Um, so Valdorf, he posts, all right, folks, uh, tell me what you think. And this is kind of one step on the roadmap, like try to get a, a gauge of the sediment, which then is the step before a, a formal proposal that would go up for a vote um, uh, by the entire DAO. So right now um, it looks like uh, there's 39 voters and the majority support the move to vote i think this proposal is great and then uh second came in i support the move i think this set of documents is good enough and we shouldn't let the perfect be the enemy of the good um looks like five percent oppose moving to the vote and three percent are undecided so um looks like this is moving forward there's uh it seems to me that the discussion is starting to narrow down and uh, normal folks like myself I'm, I'm starting to understand the the changes and wrap my head around it. Um, do you have any thoughts on you'd like to share, Ken, regarding the um, where we're at in this uh, um, staking rework? Yeah, I mean, I definitely encourage people to look at it. I will say that unlike many of the votes prior to this, they were simple to understand, right? Um, this one is a little more complex, and I give a lot of credit to to Val and Nashua for trying to flush out some of the early designs that were um, a little complicated, or they just had many different variables to it, and really trying to refine those down to kind of this is this is this is what they're trying to propose and trying to fix, right? And trying to articulate it clearly. Uh, I will say it does take a little bit of time to kind of understand the. The, the the facets to this one right um but i encourage everybody to to really look at it um it you know it um uh it proposes a change to the rpl reward structure that's going to affect everyone uh, either positively or negatively uh and I, so i don't expect this one to have kind of the strong unanimous votes when it if it does make it to vote and it looks like there's strong sediment support to to bring it to a proposal um, but I definitely encourage everyone here to look at it, uh, maybe come at it with a fresh mind and really try to study it for a little bit, kind of do your homework on this one. Um, because I, mm -hmm. I, I do think it, um, 
you know, it, it makes it makes a good case in some areas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there is a if there is a calculator that if you're interested, you can play around with. And you know, in, in terms of your own, if you have many pools, you know, how would it affect you personally? Uh, that's in uh, Valdorf's uh, Gitcoin page. I think we've posted that in a prior show. So if you want to play around with that, I encourage everyone to do it and participate in the forum. Um, uh, if this comes to a proposal, sometimes when it comes to a vote, that's when the folks on the sidelines finally come out and give their opinion. Uh, but yeah, take a look. This is a, it's a lot of work has gone into this. And I think one of the things I like about Rocket Pool is the community. We got some really, really smart people who really take a lot of time and, um, and are also willing to hear others and kind of modify and change based on what they've uh, understand from other people's feedback and input. So, hey, uh, yeah, I, I echo your sentiment, Ken, you know, get, read up on it and stay informed. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. And, and certainly I'll just add to that, that if you have questions on it, right, there is a thread in the uh, discord and people will be gladly to explain it. Right. So if you're, if you're reading it and maybe you don't understand something fully or you need clarification, I certainly needed needed a lot of clarification in my early yeah. understandings of it. Um, I think we've done a lot to, in clarifying the the post on GitHub and, and like you said, that calculator to better explain it. So maybe people won't be as confused uh, in, in, in understanding it, uh, but definitely ask. Uh, lots of folks will help you at least understand what it proposes and what that change does. And then you can decide on your own, is that something you feel is in the, the benefit of the protocol or not? Yep. Yeah, I think I said Gitcoin. Uh, GitHub is the is where never put up, uh, Val's got a lot of his work posted. So, okay, that wraps things up for this week, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us. Um, uh, of course, none of us have been financial advice. Uh, do your own research. Uh, stay informed. Uh, participate in the Discord. Ken, I really appreciate you jumping in for WAC. Uh, you've done a great job. And um, keep up your good work on Twitter spaces. I really enjoy uh, tuning in. Well, thank you, Pat. It's a pleasure to be with you this morning. Okay. Take care, guys.